Hello everyone and welcome back to another movie review. Today I'm going to be talking about the second entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe on my journey to review all of the Marvel movies before Avengers Endgame comes out, or at least before I see it and review it myself. The Incredible Hulk I have not seen in 8 years maybe, maybe more than that. It came out 11 years ago now. Uh, it is a movie that I wish I had remembered better than I had because to be completely honest I would have skipped it and probably not reviewed it on this channel, but it's kind of good that I refresh my memory and I'm able to review it for you guys now so to keep this series consistent. So the story of The Incredible Hulk follows um, a man named Bruce Banner who is a scientist. He works with gamma radiation and he is one day subjected to an experiment that bombards him with gamma radiation and through that he's able to turn into something called The Incredible Hulk, obviously titular character. That is a big green raging monster that no doubt most of you are probably familiar with by this point. And uh, he, he turns into this creature when he's angry um, or provoked. He moves to Brazil, I think it is, uh, and to keep away from action, to keep away from anything that might stress him out. And during that whole time, he's trying to figure out is there's a way to cure him, to stop him from being able to turn into the Hulk. Um, he has a online pen pal sort of guy named Mr. Blue. That are use code names. He's Mr. Green. He's Mr. Blue. And they are working together, sending each other samples of his blood, of tests that they can do to try to figure out a way to cure him. He ends up being tracked down by a an American general named Thunderbolt Ross, who sends a, a man named Emil Blonsky and a bunch of soldiers after him in Brazil. He hulks out. He loses his consciousness when he goes into the Hulk, into the Hulk form. And he ends up in Guatemala, wakes up almost completely naked, and finds his way back to America, meets with his ex-girlfriend, um, Betty Ross, who is the daughter of Thunderbolt Ross, who is the general that sent the soldiers after him. And some stuff happens. There's another big green guy that he fights, and I'm just going to leave it at that. So I'm going to be doing something a little bit interesting or unique for my reviews on this review. I'm going to be talking about all of the crappy stuff first, and then I'm going to try to bring up the end of the review with a little levity by talking about what good points I could find. Because I'm going to be completely honest, this is a crappy movie. It's not very good. It has a lot, a lot of issues. So, start off with the story, which is by far the biggest mess in this movie. I just told you the story of Bruce Banner. Most of it revolves around the Gamma accident, around him being a scientist, things like that. They do not talk about Bruce Banner going through that experiment in this movie. It is actually shown in the background of the opening credits through weird flashbacks and pulsating lights and things like that that completely passed me by and I didn't realize that they were not going to talk about it until I remembered that they had shown that. I thought they were going to sort of do a loop, I thought it was going to be some sort of creative filmmaking, but instead no, they just passed by the origin story of the character by putting it in the opening credits, which is a terrible decision and it leads to a whole host of problems throughout the course of the movie. And because they don't talk about the characters in relation to each other or how they knew each other before the accident, this movie has no emotional weight. It tries to give you emotional scenes between Betty and the Hulk or Betty and Bruce Banner, but those scenes just fall flat because you are just left to assume she was his girlfriend. They had this really intimate relationship. They don't do anything to explain. So all of the powerful emotional scenes are just moot because of how poorly paced the story is. And another big point about this movie is it's just all convenient. They end up traveling places with no explanation. The army always finds them very quickly and goes straight into an action scene. It's all just Oh, military stuff, you wouldn't understand. Oh, it's science stuff, you wouldn't understand, so we're not going to tell you. There is a fine line between letting you sit in a world where nothing needs to be explained because the world has already been developed, compared to we're not going to tell you anything because it's too complicated and we don't want to weigh down the movie with extra stuff. But because they didn't explain anything, nothing really makes sense in the long run. Also, this movie is kind of poorly made. The lighting is just awful when they're inside or at night, which is frankly most of the movie. Um, some of the outside stuff, when they're fighting in the field, when they're in a forest or a jungle, something like that, those are fine, looks okay, but everything else is just kind of nasty. Also, 
the audio balancing in some places is just completely terrible. I was watching this with my friends on full volume on my TV, and especially in some sections when they're in a helicopter or in a loud place, that the audio balancing, you can't really hear what the characters are saying. Because I couldn't have subtitles on the version that I was watching it on, I missed parts of the story, I think. And if I didn't, either way, it was still confusing. So Edward Norton plays Bruce Banner, and to me, and to probably almost every other person who's a, even slightly a fan of the Marvel movies over the last 11 years, this is going to be weird if you go back and watch this movie. Mark Ruffalo has done such a great job with the Bruce Banner character and portraying him as sort of timid, as confident in his own way when he does turn into the Hulk, and it's just strange. Edward Norton is not a very good action actor. He has a hard time transitioning between the action scenes and the more emotional scenes or the dialogue heavy scenes and it just makes the entire thing feel a little bit awkward because he doesn't have sort of the emotional capacity in his acting to make those action sequences feel powerful or make the emotional sequences feel emotional. Also, Betty Ross has no development. She is not a very interesting love interest. She's there to be a love interest, but nothing more. She's there to support Bruce Banner, but she doesn't have any personality of her own. She doesn't really have a story except for the fact that she found a boyfriend when Bruce was away in Brazil, but then she dumps him and they get back together immediately, which is awkward and strange and leads to a lot more questions that the viewers should not be asking. Another thing that they use to sort of indicate that Bruce Banner is about to hulk out is a little heart rate monitor that he wears on his wrist. It doesn't make any sense because his heart rate will go up in many situations. It goes up when he's sort of making love to his love interest. It goes up when he's getting beat up by guys. It goes up when he's scared. It goes up when he's running. It doesn't have to do with him getting angry, which is really the point of the Hulk, is that it's the sort of embodiment of his anger, him acting upon the anger that he has. But they just use the heart rate monitor. When it gets to 200, he turned into the Hulk. Doesn't make any sense. I really didn't like that. It made it feel strange and incoherent, especially because it defeats the purpose of what the Hulk is. And the pacing is just a mess of its own. They go straight from action scenes to emotional scenes with no explanation, with just a cut like that, and it feels so awkward. It kept throwing me off all throughout the movie. And I have no idea how they messed this up so badly, especially because Iron Man did not feel anything like that. They had coherent story throughout the entire thing. They had coherent emotional versus action sequences. And this is just a strange and incoherent mess. And I don't know what else to say about that. Also, all of the special effects money clearly went to Iron Man this year. Two of these movies came out in the same year and the Hulk clearly suffered because of how much effort they put into Iron Man. The special effects are pretty bad. The only time I felt like they were working was sometimes with close-ups in the Hulk and in the transformation sequences when Bruce Banner is turning into the Hulk. But aside from that, it's awkward, it's stiff, they look sort of plasticky, and it makes the big CG fights that are supposed to be the draw of this movie off-putting and look like they were made in an entirely different time period, but this one is just because they put all the money for special effects into Iron Man, and it made the Hulk suffer quite a bit. Okay, that is enough crapping on this movie. I'm gonna talk about a few positive points. First positive point is that when they're in Brazil, they like to use a lot of helicopter or plane camera shots that are impressive wide angles of the entire city with layers of buildings on top of each other, panning around with the sun coming in, and I thought those looked great. I was surprised they would cut from an awkward indoor scene with bad lighting to a pretty impressive panning wide shot of the entire city, and it just kind of blew me away at times because it felt so out of place when the rest of the movie was not shot very well. I also really like the main theme for this movie. I'm someone who listens to the Marvel soundtracks, especially the main themes of all the superhero characters, and this one really stuck with me. They really used it well. Whenever the Hulk would show up, they would play little snippets of it. During fights, they would play longer sections, and it works well to bring in a character theme that sticks in your head and reminds you, oh, this character has this powerful, sort of droning, driving theme that honestly kind of sounds like a horror movie soundtrack, which fits the sort of weird tone they were going for with this movie. 
There is also something they use called the Days Without Incident Counter, which shows how long it's been since Bruce Banner has had a Hulk incident, and I thought that was used really well. It keeps the pacing pretty consistent, lets you know when there are time jumps, but whether it be years or weeks or whatever it is, but they bring that in a few times throughout the movie, and I thought that it worked really well. Thunderbolt Ross and Emil Bolinsky, the two sort of villains in this movie, are also played very, very well. Both of the actors did an amazing job with those characters, and it is kind of juxtaposed against how not Bruce Banner. Edward Norton plays the character. Also, Mr. Blue, who I mentioned earlier, who's sort of the pen pal that Bruce Banner has for working on trying to cure himself of this whole Hulk problem that he has, is a pretty interesting concept. Having this online guide, this mysterious man who's helping out him throughout the course of the movie, and eventually he does meet him in real life, but the two of them working together is a great concept. It's just poorly executed because they don't give any explanation to why or how they met each other, why they're working together, why he trusts him, things like that. And finally, there is really one funny moment in this movie, which is disappointing because Marvel movies to me are action and character heavy with moments of levity that keep you engaged in the characters. And because there's only one funny moment in this movie, which is when they sort of reference the purple pants that Hulk always wears in the comics, it just sort of fell flat. But I do give them props for the one funny moment that they were managed to get in. The final point I'd like to make, and this is neither good nor bad, but it's clear they were trying to set up for another trilogy for the Hulk. They set up Thunderbolt Ross, who if you've read the comics, you'll know that he is the Red Hulk. They set up the villain, the leader, sort of near the end. Um, and because of this, it's kind of sad. They set up for all these great things, but unfortunately, we'll never see them on the big screen. We might never get Doc Sampson, who is a great character I like. We'll never get She-Hulk, Jennifer Walters, who's one of my favorite superheroes, to be honest. And it just kind of is disappointing to me because this movie was such a weird, an awkward flop that it means we're never going to get a little bit more deeper dive into the Hulk mythos. So in the end, The Incredible Hulk does not feel like any of the other MCU movies. It's poorly paced. There is no character development. The story is just awkward and nasty. The action is not great. The animation is not great. And honestly, the main character, the main actor, is poorly executed. I do not recommend this movie. I give it one and a half out of five stars. And hopefully this is the lowest any of the Marvel movies will get, score-wise. But we will see when I review the rest of them. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in another video. Bye.